Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about how to understand your VAT return. I'm going to walk you talk through exactly how to understand it and what happens next. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, then welcome, my name is Rachel. I'm a disruptor in the accounting industry and I'm disrupting what it means to be an accountant, what it feels like to have an accountant, and I'm disrupting the concept that you can't scale a business to seven figures without losing yourself along the way. My whole mission in business and life is to break down financial education to make it more accessible and consumable to the people who need it the most. And so I am so excited to have you here with me today. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to understand your VAT return. And I'm going to break this video down into a couple of different sections. I've covered VAT quite a lot on my channel previously, and so if you'd like to understand a little bit more about what VAT is, the schemes that are available to use, and exactly how VAT works, you can check out this playlist which contains all of my VAT content. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into how to understand your VAT return. Whether that's a VAT return that you've prepared yourself, or we as your accountants have prepared your VAT return for you, I'm going to walk and talk you through exactly how to understand it and what happens next. So let's dive in. So before we get stuck in, I just wanted to do a very brief overview into VAT and exactly what VAT is. So VAT stands for value added tax. This is a tax that comes into play when your VAT taxable turnover goes over £90,000. Again, I've got lots more content on what VAT taxable turnover is and when you need to go VAT registered here. A little bit of myth busting, lots of people think that that VAT threshold resets at the beginning of your new financial year. It does not. It is a rolling period of 12 months or 365 days. So that is what VAT is. So now that we understand what VAT is, what is a VAT return? Your VAT return is actually a form that we file to HMRC, usually quarterly, so usually four times a year. Within the VAT return, we are zooming out, we're looking at your business, and we're looking at how much VAT you owe to HMRC, and we can then deduct how much VAT you are due to reclaim from HMRC. Your VAT return will show a breakdown of the VAT that is due to HMRC on your sales, less the VAT that is due back to you from reclaiming on your purchases. If the amount reclaimable on your purchases is actually greater than your sales, this will result in a VAT refund. And if the VAT due on your sales is more than your purchases, this will result in a payment by you to HMRC. So that's what VAT is, that's what a VAT return is, but how do you actually prepare and file a VAT return? In the UK in 2024, we have something called making tax digital, which means that every VAT registered business must be filing VAT returns to HMRC through a digital platform. There are tons of making tax digital compliance softwares, but as an accountant with over 700 clients, the three top accounting softwares that we see people use to file their VAT returns are Xero, QuickBooks, and Sage. Filing through digital software isn't just to remain compliant. It can really help you to lean into the numbers, really understand what's happening within your business, and make sure that you've got live, up-to-date data at your fingertips at any given time. So on your VAT return in your accounting software, once you've done all of your bookkeeping or when we as your accountant send you your VAT return to review and approve, you'll notice that there's actually nine different boxes on your VAT return. And so I thought it would be super helpful if I walk and talk you through the key information that we're looking for in each box. So box one on the VAT return is VAT due on sales and other outputs. And so this box should include the total amount of VAT that you have charged your customers on all of the goods and services during that reporting period. Box number two is the VAT that is due in the same period on the acquisition of goods. Important to note here that box two should only be completed where you're actually acquiring goods in Northern Ireland from EU member states. So we don't see this box used super frequently. Box three is super simple. It is the total value of box one and box two added together. And so that is the total output that during your period. Box number four is most people's favorite. This is the VAT reclaimed on purchases during the same period. So in this box, we're looking to see all of the VAT that we're going to be able to recover from HMRC, which is recoverable from all of the purchases that you've made during the period. Box number five might not be everybody's favorite, but it is the most important box on the return. Box number five is the difference between box number three and box number four. So box number three is our total VAT on sales. And box number four is how much we can reclaim from VAT in purchases. And so to calculate the value to include in this box, 
we take the figure from box number three and deduct box number four, which will then give you the difference in box number five. And so box number five is telling us the net VAT amount that is going to be due or repayable from HMRC. And that is the payment or reclaim that we're going to be making from HMRC. So box number five really is the most important box. The boxes below box five are really supporting and supplementary information to box one through to five. And so in box six, we see the total value of sales and other outputs. Box number seven is the total value of purchases and other inputs. Box number eight is the supplies of goods and services that were mentioned in box two. And number nine is the acquisition of goods and related costs from EU member states. Again, this is relating to box two. And so that was a little bit of a deep dive into all of the different boxes. Again, noting that we're paying specific attention to box number three, box number four, and box number five, because they are going to be the most important to you. VAT can feel quite daunting and a little bit overwhelming for a lot of business owners. Through the process of starting your business all of the way through to hitting the VAT threshold at £90,000, which is the VAT threshold in 2024, very often lots has changed within your business. And so becoming VAT registered, searching on YouTube or Google for this video might actually be a really good time to reach out to an accountant. Hitting that VAT threshold is normally the point that lots of people feel like they need more support, whether that's monthly financial deep dives, financial MOTs, bookkeeping or VAT services. So if you're based in the UK, you'll searching for this content on YouTube because actually you feel like you need more support, I would absolutely love to hear from you. You can use the links in the description to this video to inquire to become a client of ours, where we'd absolutely love to support you through this journey. As always, I would absolutely love to hear from you in the comment section. If you've got more questions on VAT and you can't find the answers on my YouTube channel, please just shout because I use the comment section to curate the content that you see next. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. As always, the very best way to support me as a creator is to give this video a thumbs up, to hit the subscribe button, button and turn the notifications bell on to get an update every single time I release a juicy video like this one. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I hope to see you again very soon.